Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Uh, here we have finally finished in the last couple of sections talking about the student T distribution. Uh, and here we're finally going to use that distribution for something. So we covered how to use it, we covered how to use the table in the previous sections. Uh, and here we're going to learn about confidence intervals when we have small sample sizes. Now what that means is the big picture here, remember, there's basically two main things you have to look at when you're doing confidence interval, or I guess it's one thing, but there's two main paths forward. If you have a large number of samples, greater than 30 is what we define to be large number of samples, then you are basically using the normal distribution, and you're using it as an approximation to a student t-distribution because as we have already said, when you have higher and higher sample sizes, the t-distribution approaches a normal distribution, right? Um, but in the case when you don't have that many samples, you're going to have to do something a little more direct. We're going to have to use the t-distribution directly. Now this can happen when you have a very expensive production of things that you're studying. For instance, it's easy to take lots of samples of candy bars because candy bars are, are cheap. You can take 200 of them and sample them or 500 of them and sample them. But what if you're building skyscrapers and you're looking at the safety factor of all of the skyscrapers you're building? Or what if you're producing bulldozers or airplane wings or jet engines, something very complicated and you're studying the reliability or something and you're trying to extrapolate what your population, your production facility is doing as a whole from your sample? Well, you may not be able to take 55 jet engines off the line and look at them and study them. That would cost you a billion dollars. You can't do that. So what you do is you compromise. You say, well, I'm going to take a smaller number of samples. I'm willing to take the hit on accuracy there, but I want to learn what I can out of maybe out of 10 jet engines or out of five of them, even if it's maybe not quite as good as having a larger number of samples. So when we do that, when we have sample size small, small sample size means less than 30. And what we're going to do now is use the student T distribution to find the confidence interval. But keep the big picture in mind. All you're really trying to do is find that margin of error, E. Once you have that, you can add it to your sample mean and subtract it from your sample mean, and you get that confidence interval. So here when you have small sample sizes, there's a couple of things we have to assume when, you, when we do these problems. Now I can tell you that for the problems that we're going to do here, these are always going to be true. Um, but we need to make sure you know what the assumptions are. The first one is all samples are random. We've said this many, many times before. It would be silly if I had a global manufacturing of, I don't know, computer chips, um, and I'm going to study my global infrastructure. It would be dumb for me to sample all of my sampling from like one facility in Houston. Right, whenever I'm producing them in Beijing and everywhere else. I mean, I would need to do random sampling of my whole population if I want to hope to learn about the global characteristics of what I'm doing. So you need to make sure you're doing everything random. All right. 